All right. <clears throat> We're going to do a little mining today. We're operating out of Arc L1. gonna hit Aaron's halo on the way to Crusader this is where I got this from I don't I honestly don't remember where on earth I found this originally searching the internet but this is a great document with a bunch of refinery distances to Aaron's halo document Vanguard that's the org that published this and that's a link to their website right there so uh, based on personal experience I'm gonna try to drop in when I'm about 34 million kilometers away from Crusader so about 350,000 kilometers into Aaron's Halo. So here we are at Arc L1. We are all geared up. A couple things you want to do when you're going to go mining for Quantanium is... Um, on your prospector you're going to want to make sure you have the following gear equipped the A number one thing that allows you to harvest quantanium is this mining laser the Lancet MH1 mining laser size 1 make sure you don't buy the MH2 that's for the mole and other future mining vessels that can use a size 2 mining laser head. This prospector can only use a size 1. Now the big thing this thing does is does a couple really nice things. Number one, it reduces instability by 75%. That gives you a lot less power spikes as you're trying to mine. Resistance, minus 75%. This allows you to harvest from bigger and bigger rocks. Uh, I can typically crack a rock up to about uh, 5,200 kilos. At least I believe that's what the 5,200 represents. We'll take a look at that when we get there. Optimal charge window. This is huge. Plus 40 percent. So if you've seen any mining videos, and we'll, we'll, we'll show this here in a moment when we get out there, but uh, that's the green section of your mining power uh, I forget what they call that but the, the, the power slide and um, this when you're mining a good percentage chunk of quantanium it's, um, it's that's a very small sliver to begin with so that plus 40 percent is huge uh, charge rates minus 30% but that's okay it goes a little bit slower but that's all right shatter damage if you do explode the rock reduces damage by 50% uh, throttle speed is plus 50% so that uh, it gives you more responsive uh, responsive um, it, it, it makes it makes the controls more responsive as, as you change the power input with your mouse wheel or if you're using a joystick setup you might have that um, mapped to your throttle instead or, or a hat or one of your other axes all right so you have up to three mods on this ship you can use and I'll be honest I do not keep um, the lifeline module which is a basically saves your butt if you get get your asteroid overcharged and it explodes to keep you from getting damaged I just it's you might want to have it initially but once you get decent at this it's just it, I never use it never use it so instead I have um, I have an optimum module this is a 
triggered module which can briefly increase the size of your green charge window by a significant amount uh, what is it um, yeah 75 percent and so if you're having difficulty staying in the green zone and you're overcharging use this it lasts for 20 seconds and um, use that to, to crack your rock um, then the other two ones I have are passive modules they're always on uh, the Rieger module 2 also increases optimal charge window by 8% so that's in addition to the base 40% from the mining laser so 48% between the two of them um, that's important it increases resistance by 5% not a big deal like I said we can crack rock, rocks up to 5200 units and that's it so that's that's a really good module to have and then the focus module um, focus module reduces ah, I keep getting the wrong information here let's go like this there we go that's why focus module reduces resistance by 6% so you can crack slightly bigger rocks and increases instability by 6%, which isn't much compared because you have this MH1 Lancet, which reduces instability by 75%. So giving 6% back isn't that big of a deal. So there you go. You want to make sure you have these mounted. Uh, remember, if you have a rented prospector, you cannot upgrade those mods. So you're stuck with the basic mining laser head, which means mining quantanium is not something you're going to be able to do okay so we're going to pull out our ship pad two so if you're using a basic mining laser head um, i would recommend you could still go to the aaron's halo but you're going to want to look for rocks with borays and bexalite and uh I've had pretty good luck with Laranite in terms of, turn this down a little bit, I don't know if you can hear me or not. No. So Laranite, I've been able to find rocks with pretty good size Laranite. Now Laranite is obviously not as valuable as quantanium but nothing is as valuable as quantanium that's why we're gonna mine quantanium right but laranite is worth um, about um, I believe it's 30 credits a, a unit refined so a full load of laranite is worth about a third of what a full load of quantanium is once it's refined full load of quantanium is worth almost a quarter of a million credits about 240,000 credits once refined when you take out the cost of the refining process um, a full load of laranite is only worth about 80,000 credits but if you're renting a prospector you get a couple of those loads and uh, you know make your money build up or go do some bounty missions to earn some money but bottom line is you want to save up the two million for buying a prospector because renting a prospector ultimately is not gonna quite work for you so because I when we bring this quantanium in we're gonna be in a hurry so I don't repair restock etc when I land I'm gonna want to get into the base and get my ship stored as quickly as possible so we're just fueling up here all right and lifting off getting out of here use our F2 key, bring up our Starlink map to set Crusader as our waypoint. Thank you. And please visit again. It's a little laggy here for me, but. 
but I am running PDF document and a few other things, so it's not too terribly surprising. Halo, we get in there, what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our waypoint back to where we just came, came from, where we just left from, uh, Arc L1, so that when we have the Quantanium, remember, once you start filling your cargo hold with Quantanium, you have 15 minutes until your ship explodes. You can jettison the cargo, but obviously it's valuable and don't want to do that if we don't have to so we the one of the keys to getting back and getting on the platform and not having our ship blow up is to be ready to jump back to um, arc l1 as soon as we are able to as soon as we can when we're, you know. We are fast approaching the point where we want to drop out. To be fair, this is not a spot I usually mine in, because I didn't want to give away my sweet spot, so let's, let's see what happens. Uh, I don't know, maybe we have to go a little closer. If you're using this route, we have 337. Alright, so one of the first things we want to do, so I'm using the tab key and I'm scanning. And one 
trick that I've been told by other people and seems to be holding for me is if you can see the the if you're getting an echo at 13 kilometers here like we are then those objects are quantanium so we're gonna keep that centered we're gonna go to our star map we're gonna set our waypoint or set our route back to arc l1 so like i said once we've got our quantanium on board we can hightail it out of there in quick fashion um, the default setup for changing the radar arc, you'll notice there it says 360 degrees on, in red on, on the left side of the HUD right over here. And um, we're going to change that using the period and comma keys. So now we're not, I just knocked it down to 180. It says 179. So 179. And so we only want to be focusing on objects that are in front of us normally. And then as we get closer, we're going to narrow it down to the 90% range, 90 degree range. And that'll really help, that'll help us pop these asteroids. So let's get cruising. We'll head off. It's 13 kilometers away, so you can definitely speed up a bit to get in there. One thing I definitely recommend when you get in close is do not approach an asteroid with it right off your nose because you, you're going to slam into it. I guarantee you, you're going to slam into it. See, I'm coming in pretty hot as it is. So we're going to cool our jets. Yeah, I came in way fast on this. I got a little eager. Got a little eager. But that's all right. I'm gonna go switch to mining mode, get our scan, and oh, it is not a Q type. It is an M type. Festinite and tungsten. So, okay, so much for that idea. See, eh, I always thought that was a wives' tale. About the long distance scanning thing and there we go proving it false so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep our nose pointed generally in the direction of where we want to go it just makes it easier to make sure that we don't uh, run around in circles as we're searching so if we keep our arc l1 quantum point that's the little diamond there just off the nose in front of us we'll always be going in the same direction or same general direction so let's see what we got right there that's a good spot to go so what I just did a moment ago was actually not that great of an idea coming in too hot just makes it much more dangerous so better to use use your cruise control top out at your top end of your cruising range be, and be patient now when you get in close to a, about 5,000 meters from your target you can reduce your range there to 90 percent or 90 degrees like I just did and then you will actually see asteroids pop so there's four of them and what you can do when you're at this distance now you can switch to your mining mode and we can see over there on the right hand side these are m type m type asteroids so since we're looking for quantanium we can now ignore these and switch our range back to 180 again we've got our nose of our ship pointed generally in the direction we of the arc l1 station uh, that's where the 180 thing comes in handy too is since um, if you keep pointed in the same general direction and you only go after asteroids that show up you're only going to be you're not going to be getting echoes from asteroids that are behind you I guess is what I'm trying to say so 
it just helps um, filter out some of the noise that you get when you're doing a 360 degree radar scan. I'll put a link in there to this uh, YouTube music. This is just a compilation of a whole bunch of spacey music that somebody put together. Although we've also got the Star Citizen music going on. I should actually probably turn that off. to 90 degrees, Ooh, pop, 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 three asteroids. Uh, sometimes you get these asteroids that will not scan. I've tried to do on these is we'll get in close and then we're going to hit it with the extraction mode not the mining mode and that might trigger a scan Again, a rock that doesn't want to scan, what the hell? I hate that. That's frustrating. Get our nose pointed back to our target.
So this can be quite dull and boring as you search around for your Quantanium, there's no doubt about that, but the payoff's worth it in the end. God, what is it with nothing wanting to scan? Oh, yeah, that's so frustrating. Try powering off and back on again. Easy. Always have some good music for this, because there's going to be long periods of not much going on. This is just bullshit, not a single one of these is scanning.
frustrating. Scanning earlier. No, I'm getting nothing. No idea why. E-type, though, not what we want. But at least it's scanning. type. Yes. 
Cute type. So you know, oh, here's 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with this one first. And what we're going to do is we're going to break it down first and then start the extraction process. We'll break this one, we'll break the other one. We're probably going to end up with several in, once we get it broken down to the extractable chunks we're going to be um, we should have many many chunks of 100% quantanium so this will should should give us a nice clean 32 full full hold so what we're going to do is we're going to get in close this has got a mass of 4931 so not not some it's definitely within the range of what we can crack so to keep from drifting around what you want to do is get centered then use your right shift key and this will lock in your horizontal and vertical movement if you're using your mouse and keyboard like I am that'll keep you nice and stationary you can use Use your A and D keys to shift left and right, and you can use your space bar on your left control key to move up and down. Alright, we're on mining mode. So, uh, using the G key, I am going to change to targeted mode. This allows me to put the laser at the end where I'm pointing my mouse gives me a lot more flexibility in controlling where I'm placing the power. So for a rock of this size, you're pretty much going to need to be at 100% or close to 100% power. So we're going to go ahead and get it up there. Notice how our charge level isn't even going up or is barely, barely going up. So what I usually do is I usually get in nice and close. We're going to be in we're at 15 meters or so you can see that information right up here the current range we're at 15 meters our powers going up now what you want to do is you want to move this around until you find a spot where that bar really this bar over here is what we're talking about our charge level and uh, what we want is that to go up and there are I don't know what you want to call them. I think of them as soft spots in the rock where it'll go up better than others. And if you find, once you, if you see that, that's, that's the spot you want to keep it on. Now, because we're at 100% power, there's, oh, see, it's jumping up there. Since we're at 100% power, there's no real way to increase the input of power into the rock other than getting closer. And looks like we just need to do that. We're, 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 you can get closer still, but this is good. Yes, it's a, it's a little slow of a process, but uh, better to be slow and steady. Um, sometimes it's easier to see this charging level window if you're on the dark side of the asteroid, um, right now it's pretty faded out, but I'm used to pretty, oh, there was, that's our, that's our hot spot right there. So once we get up into this green range, it starts getting, once the charge starts charging up in the green, we're going to back off a little bit. our power level really nice and easy nice and smooth this is a very this because it's only got two percent quantanium it's got a really big optimum green area so very easy to do here again we're just going to back it off a little more out to about 30 meters cut our power down here we go just cut it because it's almost there perfect just what we want to do back up a little bit use that right shift key again to get your around we can do a quick scan of these rocks most of this is not going to be worth two percent four percent quarter of a percent but 
this this rock we knew this because going in because it had a very low percentage so if this rock was by itself and not sitting with another rock with 30 percent i would have ignored this now we can see you can always tell right away when that green range is more narrow that means there's more quantanium so this has got four almost four and a half percent so we're going to go ahead and crack this one down to smaller segments now these smaller chunks of rock do not take nearly as much energy to crack so we're going to crank this up to about 30 percent well, 41 percent we'll just have to see how it goes but you definitely don't need a hundred percent this is going to jump up fairly quickly here So here I'm just trying to save time by getting it up there, but otherwise you want to approach a little more slowly than that. This guy's pretty stable. All right, now we're in the green. Cut that down. You can also hear the power, and you can kind of... Get a, you'll get a feel for that, for what it sounds like when you're at the right power level. Nice. Now I've switched to extraction mode just to make sure I don't accidentally start hitting it with the mining laser they're this small they'll explode quickly you don't want to do that so yeah look at that two and a half percent and it's got 30 percent inner materials right now i'm not seeing anything that we're gonna extract and suck up here there's just way too much crap i was hoping we could get like one small chunk out of this that would be a hundred percent quantanium or close to it that one's 18 percent but it's also half inert that is not those are not good numbers hundred percent barrel yeah so None of this, um, we're not going to waste any more time on this rock. We're not going to get crap out of that. This, this is the bad boy we want over here. 30% <clears throat> quantanium. <coughs> Pardon my cough. Oh, there we go. See, this has got a nice... Looks like this one's actually should be a little bit easier to crack than the first one. We are at 100%. Again, we're adjusting our, our, our power by distance right now more than anything else. be in the right spot. See how that power level just dropped, started to drop? It's because I wasn't pointed at the right spot. You gotta be pointed at the right spot. A lot of times they're very sensitive to that. Here we go. So I'm moving, moving the laser head around just a little bit, just ever so slightly probing to find the right spot. Because I see hitting it and then losing it uh, about there sometimes they'll do this where that power level will jump around like this and then drop down and you're like what do I gotta do to get this rock cracked usually it means you gotta get in closer but this is the spot see it's getting a nice steady climbing action up into this range we're gonna back off we gotta watch that closely, make sure it doesn't get into the overpowered range. 
No, this is where you could use that optimum module if you're if you're not if, you, if you're not feeling confident confident enough. I'll oh, see it dropped out of the range. It's all right. Just be patient. It'll come right back up. We're in the sweet spot, so it's good. It's jumping around because there's instability. That's just the way Quantanium is. Get just a little bit closer. Yeah, up back and forth, back and forth. You're going to be doing a lot of that. Up and down, up and down. That's 84% quantanium, borase and inert. Inert's only 12%. When we crack that down to smaller chunks, we're going to have pretty much nothing but 100% chunks. Look at this one. This is going to be good, too. See, look at that. That's 100%, and we haven't even broken it down to little pieces yet. Probably the same thing here. Nope, this is going to be no quantanium at all almost completely inert, so we won't even be bothering with that. Uh, this is probably the same thing here, yep. A couple smaller chunks here, these are probably going to be, oh no, that one's no quantanium there either. I bet this one does though. No. So all our quantanium is in these three chunks. This one, this one, which is 100%, and this one. Nope. Where'd the other one go? It's also 100%. So nice and easy on these on the smaller rocks. Don't overdo it. It's gonna that bar is gonna jump around quite a bit. So be prepared to just turn it down and back off because you don't want to overcharge. These things will explode. They will not only will they destroy you, but all that good quantum we've been working so hard to get it will be gone. Playing that wheel up and down. Just back off. Don't panic when you hear that. Just get it back out of the red range. That's the crappiest one right there that we're probably going to end up harvesting from. There's 100%. So, let's break this 100% one up into smaller pieces.
jumped up. You gotta be careful of that. Sometimes you'll get these little lag spikes. I don't know if it's by design or by just what, but. time to start extracting. Now we know these are 100% because the parent mining bit was. So if you look over here where it says mass 278, what this is going to translate into is about 5.6 SCUs. clock starts ticking as soon as we start harvesting so right now we got 15 minutes to get this back to where it needs to go 5.5 so there's honestly there's way more quantanium here than our whole hold can than our cargo hold can can hold that can fit in our cargo hold so we're just going to focus on these 100% pieces because don't want to have any extraneous crap in our cargo hold. We want it to be 100% quantanium if we can do that. And based on what's here, we're going to be, if not, it's, it's going to be real close. the right mouse button to change to, to toggle between mining mode and extraction mode by the way I don't think I said that before oh. well I'll remember earlier when I said we might not want to extract this one because it's got too much crap well it's good. It's good. goes full get out of mining mode get into quantum jump mode your nose pointed on our target and we're gonna get back to base and get landed so we did very well not quite a hundred percent but very very close to it uh, this load will be worth once it's refined somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000 credits We'll know for sure when we get to the refinery. But that's how you mine Quantanium in Aaron's Halo. A lot of patience required just because you're going to come across a lot of asteroids that aren't Quantanium. But you just got to be patient. Uh, usually a single asteroid with 30% uh, or better is going to fill your hold. That's what we ran into here had a 30% and a 2.5% starting asteroid. And uh, if, you can, if you find a 40%, you'll, you'll actually be leaving Quantanium behind. Actually, we did here too, although just not much from that 2% asteroid. So if you come across Quantanium uh, asteroid or a couple asteroids and they all have like just a couple, you know, 2-3%, 
don't waste your time. You, you probably want, uh, if you've got multiple asteroids that are in the range of like 15 to 20 percent, you've got at least two with that kind of percentage, then go ahead and go for it. Otherwise, as a single asteroid, you definitely need at least 20 percent. Or you're not going to be able to fill your hole, your your cargo hold. And the thing is, once you start harvesting the quantanium, extracting it, you got 15 minutes, so you're not going to have time to go find another asteroid to fill your cargo hold. So it's um, you know, you have to make decisions there if you got an asteroid that's got a borderline percentage. That's all there is to it. It's usually worth it to keep going if you honestly, if it's if you're thinking, well, it, it's easy to get frustrated or bored and be like, fine, I'll just take what I'll just take this and don't worry about the fact that my cargo hold is only 60 or 70 percent full. So that's a personal decision. Time, it's all a factor. careful because you definitely don't want to run into anything on your way into the base at the last minute while you're getting things going. I'll usually jack up my speed here until I get to the armistice zone. We are on a time frame. I don't know if we'll when when uh, when you're down to five minutes left on the timer, you will get a a warning noise, and then this yellow button up here will start to flash. And you can eject your cargo, but I honestly don't remember what the key combination is. I'm not going to look it up right now. They gave us a hot key for automating contacting the landing services, so you should definitely look at that in your options if you haven't already. It's not by default bound to anything, so I've made my mine bound to Alt N. So I just used it. Don't forget to put your landing gear down. Right. Got a landing pad assigned. Looks like it's on the side we're on, it's not around the back side, so that's good. Just remember, there is no speed limit in space. But the laws of physics still apply. That's our warning that we're down to five minutes. 
which is plenty of time. So no need to panic. We're actually even gonna repair and refuel real quick. plan now is we just need to get out of the ship, get into the station, and store our ship. Once the ship is stored, then the countdown ends. And at that point, we're safe. We no longer have to worry about our unstable cargo. So, this is not a time to be checking for missions or cargo deliveries or anything else. It is get in, get your ship stored. Because if you don't do that, all the time you've spent running around has will have been completely wasted. Now, one nice thing about mining is, even if things go wrong, your prospector explodes on the platform, etc. Basically, you're not going to be out any money. Um, if, if your ship is destroyed, your mining head will still be there, uh, but you will have to get new mods. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's unlike cargo runs, you don't have to put any money in up front. So, if things go bad, get a 30k disconnect whatever yeah you're out of the time that you've put in and that, that kind of sucks obviously but there you go it's safely stored boom now we're gonna head down to the refinery and find out just how much our goodies are worth Arc L1 is a nice station because you do get, uh, I, is it, I thought on Quantanium it was like plus 4%. We'll see when we get down here. So the refinery is uh, where you, you can either, s this Quantanium that we harvested, we could either sell it directly without refining it or we refine it but it's all it's worth double after you refine it so generally speaking you want to refine your materials but if you're doing a large operation maybe if you're running a mole with a couple prospectors and you you're pretty much mining everything in sight maybe that's not what you want to do but that's kind of a to me the it doesn't make much sense not to refine uh, the materials because like I said they're worth double after you refine them so you've spent all this time it, you know you're gonna go out and you're gonna mine more so it, if you if you're looking for instant credits mining usually is not there's, there's usually not a need to immediately get the credits that you can get so I don't know I can't I can't think of a, too many circumstances where I would want wanted immediately now this is a shop where you can buy hey, again, mining oh. heads and mods and see they've got some like. also some water and snacks but unfortunately these terminals are completely foobarred right now a patch oh yeah well so So you can't actually buy from them. So instead you have to go... Uh, I know there's uh, at Area 18... Can, I think it was at Tammany and Sons you can buy that stuff. So, so here's more sales. This is if you want to... That's not good. Uh, 
prospector should be coming up. But it's not. Such a lovely game. Let's go over here and see if we've got... Okay, so it shows it there, but... Or does it? Oh no, that's my... I guess we won't know ahead of time how much this is going to be worth. Because usually you can... I, I don't know why it's not letting me select. Alright, so we're going to set up a work order. all of this um, to me it doesn't make any sense to do anything but a high yield process and since everything takes time anyway I usually do the Ferron exchange which is a high yield moderate cost low speed if I get a quote 13 hours, 27 minutes at a cost of a little bit less than 12,000 credits. Now I can tell you from personal experience that this amount here is about 5% of the final refined value. So what that's telling me is that this load of ore is worth about 236,000 credits minus this 11,000 that we're going to pay to refine it. So that was a very lucrative haul. And this is one I have from yesterday that I mined that's, that's working right now that also had almost 100% quantanium, a little, little bit more than we did here. Origin, originally, uh, the yield... Uh, it's yielding three, just over 3,013 total units, and here we got 27,039, so about 10% less. I ended up with just a little bit more of these other things. So yeah, so between these two right here Hi. working, Hi. I've that, that's about... 450,000 credits worth. Call it 425. 425,000 credits worth of Quantanium. It's going to put me over 5 million for total money once these are done processing. So, there you have it. That's how you mine. That's that's how you make some money. Let's, let's look what this guy's got. this guy can hear me or not. He looks like he's not processing any of anything other than the quantanium. That doesn't really make sense to me, but hey, to each their own. Alright, that's the end of that. 
Hope you enjoyed the video.